Hey guys, I'm on my lunch break. Um, it's right at one o'clock. Um, I didn't bring my lunch today, and I um just pulled out of the garage. I'm going to Taco Bell up the street here. On a, my energy level is so it's been a rough week. Just getting myself back kind of on track. And I'm sleeping off, but did I speak? Hey, y'all, how y'all doing if I didn't? Happy Thursday. Anyway, yeah, out of a 10, I'm on a 4 today. I'm on slow motion for real, for real. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to put a Taco Bell for something cheap and quick. And I'm probably going to try to lay my head back in this car for 15 minutes when I get done eating. Today, I will be taking my full lunch break, probably uh, at least 45 minutes, because it's probably going to take about 15 minutes to eat the little Taco Bell, and uh, you know how that goes. 10 minutes, 5 minutes to get there in bed, you know. And then I'll just lay my head back for like 15 minutes and go in, because uh, maybe a little power nap or something will do me. Y'all take power naps. Oh, sometimes they a lifesaver. I'm going to need, I need some today. Anyway, yeah. I'll get back with y'all in a minute when I get to Taco Bell. And with my lunch, I'm going to pull on back up in the garage and I'll sit and talk to y'all. Okay. Hey, y'all, I'm back. I thought I was going to park back in the garage, but it's a park. I, I like to park out in the back of the building by the elevator sometime. And um, the park it was a parking space open, so I came back. But I just got back from, um, from um, Taco Bell. And I just got the $5 chalupa box. And it come with a... Uh, I didn't, it didn't come with no sweet tea, but I got a sweet tea. Y'all, you know how long it's been since I had a sweet tea? It's been a long time, honey, since I had a sweet tea. But I'm going to drink me one today. Uh, I got to get myself back on track. Since I left the cruise, I ain't been back on track. I just been in the car having, but I'm going to have to get off it real quick. As you know, I'm doing it for health reasons. More so than weight loss. But I'm doing it for health reasons. And plus, I said I was going to do a 30-day keto trial. But anyway, let me say my grace, y'all. Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the nourishment of my body. In Christ's name, amen. Well, anyway, I got this $5 chalupa box like I see it. And um, it comes with some of the cinnamon porter rolls. I don't even know what's coming in this darn box. Cinnamon twirls. I know y'all can't hear and see this. Um, look like a chalupa, a taco, a regular taco, and I don't know what this is. Beefy burrito look like. Anyway, I'm gonna eat this beefy burrito right quick. Put me some, put me some mild sauce. It ain't nothing in here but beef and cheese. Look like. Put me some mild sauce on here. You know, for five dollars, you can't beat all this. There's plenty of food. But yeah, y'all. So that's it. That be for real, y'all. So y'all, I was on a cruise ride, right? and we were off on a tour on the uh, Cayman Island, and. I was sitting by behind this older couple. They've been married 60 years. And, you know, my knee was bothering me, and I was using my cane. So, some of the places we had been, we had been there before, so I didn't get off at every stop. I stayed on the bus and talked to them. It was a very interesting conversation. I, um, we were talking, and come to find out her husband They take a couple of trips a year. And they live in Arizona. But I have three daughters. And she told me her oldest daughter had retired. And was living with her one of her daughters until she figured out what she wants to do. You Knowing her retirement that one of her daughters don't have much money. And so the daughter that retired is now living with that daughter. I guess to help her out. 
And she said they go all over. Her daughter worked in New York, but they go all over to visit their kids. And the one daughter that don't have much money, the other two come. But the one that don't have much money, they go and... Or they send for her, because it's cheaper for them to let her come there to visit and pay for her to come than them traveling. Well, they tickled me so bad because she told her husband, Honey, I'm sorry I lied to you. And uh, he, I told you he'd only be out an hour. Well, that was a lie because you, you, you had to tender off the boat, first of all. Then you had to wait to get on a tour if you got one, which we did. Then the tour took about two hours. And he took me so bad. He said, you act like I'm surprised. Well, she and I were talking about her kids and how they retired and they are traveling. He apparently had been in the Air Force. And I was telling him my father was in the Air Force for 23 years. And... We grew up, and he was, she was saying they were stationed over in Germany, and I told her we were in England. You know, I went to high school. That She said her kids went to high school in Germany. Mm. So we started talking about, you know, handicapping your kids, and I was telling her about, we were talking with Emma was also sitting with me. And she was asking her what she did, and asking me what she did, and I told her she was an accountant. She had been to school, blase, blase. You know, that we live together. I told her, no, it was important for me that she got out on her own for a little while. I don't mind if she comes back and stay with me and stuff, but how? If you don't enable your kids to know what it is to live without you. Now, I still do a lot for my daughter. Don't get me wrong. But you have to enable your kids to know what it is to live without you. You're doing them a disservice if you don't. To learn how to pay their own bills. To learn how to do things. To take care of themselves. To cook for themselves. To clean for themselves. You know. And my daughter still comes over and get food for my house sometimes when I cook. Or she'll ask me certain things. But you have to think beyond you being there for your child. Be, that you live in. Don't let them have to figure out a whole lot of stuff after you leave here. You prepare them and teach them and train them so they'll be capable should today be your last day here, they'll be able to manage. Not to say they won't be prepared, you know, to lose you, because I'm sure they'll be sad. They have to go through a string of emotions. But you still want to prepare them as best as possible. And you can't be selfish trying to hold on to your children, you know, in your home and stuff. Just so you won't be alone. Alone. You have to get an opportunity to grow up. And another thing is, you may help your child. By letting them stay for a minute. Say you are. And she was saying she made her kids pay. And I told her I made my daughter pay something too. You know. Um, and it ain't that I couldn't pay rent. I still was paying my rent. But it teaches them that as an adult. When you move into adulthood. You have to pay where you like. And whether you save the money up. You don't let your child know you saving it up. She was saying how she took the money and put it away for her kids. But they had to pay that money on time. Just like they would have to pay rent on time or whatever. You know. That. Because you got to think if your child's not there, you're not buying the groceries. You're not doing a lot of extra stuff you would do. And your, your, your expenses are, are there. But... It teaches them that you, that's the taco, y'all. I should have got a soft one. That you have to pay bills. So, 
she said when the children got ready to find a move out, she presented them back with their money, you know, and told them that she had been saving it for them. They were surprised. But, you know, the expectation was you're going to pay. And she said that gave me on a cushion. When they did get out. And it also stops children from believing they're so entitled. So, she said that one of her daughters that don't have that much money. And keep in mind, the husband ain't the one. She never did say how old she was. Said to her, when you die, I'm going to be okay when y'all die. And she said, she told her, well, I got bad news for you. She said it was a few years ago. That we're going to travel and have a good time. We're going to save and all. That's what we worked hard for. So when we got here, we could live and do some things that we wanted to do. So she said her daughter actually asked the uh, offended, like, how dare you spit up our inheritance? And so we got on the subject of people waiting on people to die so they can get something. And that's why people are always all been out of shape about other people's things and things that they have not even worked for. If you're able-bodied, earn your own to get your own. If somebody leaves you something great, but don't leave and, and wait on somebody else's demise for you to want to do something with your life. And I told her, yeah, I'm going to live what I can. And I'm sure whatever I have, my daughter's going to get. And she's going to do whatever she wants to with it. She ain't going to be thinking about my mama wouldn't have did this or that or that. And I don't want her to. I want her to live and do whatever she wants to with the money. Life goes on. I just pray she be sensible with it, but I'm not going to be here. You know, but that's how I was saying. When people die, people act such a fool. So we were still talking, you know, when the bus got back on. And there was another lady on. They were from Wisconsin, her and her husband. And they were talking about different stuff. And she was saying she going two or three trips a year. They were around my age. So they were around 50, 49, 50 years old, I'm assuming. Because they looked at, you know, they looked, we, we looked about the same age. And she was saying how, and I was saying how I know people that have retired. I would use my dad as an example. And I say, even though my dad traveled quite a bit with being a military. I know several people that have retired and died. They've waited to do a lot. You know, that's the chalupa, y'all. Until they retire and they don't get a chance to do it. Mm. She was saying, so she goes and on her trips. And we were just talking about how we go. And I was saying, and my daughter was saying, she realizes it's a blessing to be able to go. And I said, yeah. And I basically told her, you know, I said, we don't have the money to just go out right and pay for something. You know, the style, we're going to get up and go to uh, Mexico today and get up and pay for it today. I don't have that kind of money. I plan for things and then I work extra and do side hustles and be on a payment plan. So we can go. And she said that's basically what they do. They pay on it over time. So they can go. So. Another gentleman. Was out there. And he was, he was on the tender. And so, you know, it was a whole group of us. So we were all still talking about some of the same stuff. And 
he started telling me that he had tried to enjoy his life. And he was with his granddaughter on the excursion. I don't forgot where he said he was from. And he made a joke. Talking about all his ladies. He said, I got to hurry up and get home. He said, I'm about had it with this trip. He said, because I got to get home. But, you know, I'm going to go again in a couple of months. <coughs> he said, I got to get home to all my ladies. <laughs> I said, all your ladies? You better do it then. <laughs> And so he said once a year he pays for all his, he said he pays for 10 people over cruise once a year. And he enjoyed it because it's family time, he said, since his wife passed. He was retired. But he said he paid for all his kids and their spouses. Now I don't know where 10 came in at. But, and himself, and he said he didn't pay for his granddaughter, her, their parent, her mother paid for that, he said. So, I don't know if one of the children wasn't married or what. But, he talks about the importance of living while you have life. And doing things while you have life. And while you have some moderate, moderate health. You know, and that you are still able to get up and go. And I ain't going to lie, y'all. I'm here lately. I wake up every day in pain with this knee. But I walk when I could. I use the cane when I could. And I saw a few people on scooters. And I'm like, you have to live when you can. Do what you can. And I don't mean you have to go on a cruise or anything like that. I'm not saying that. But go somewhere and do something. Do the things you want to do. Don't let something stop you. But if there's something you want to do, I saw some day. Don't think about the length of the journey or how you're gonna get there. Just start working towards it. If every payday. You put $10 on the trip and uh, uh, whatever it is you want to do, $5 on you spend spending money. Do that. It'll add up over time. You'll be surprised. And don't necessarily wait for somebody to go with you. Because a lot of times what I've learned, I got a lot of people saying, ooh, I would love to go here. I want to go with you. Let me know when you go. But it never fails. Every time I let them know, something else came up. Or well, they got something else they want to do that over what you said. And then they'll call you when it's time for But next time you go, girl, let me know. Whatever. Don't let somebody stop you depending on somebody else. Then you'll be disappointed. Call you're depending on somebody else to go somewhere with you and they've disappointed you. So, just my one with my co-worker. She smokes, though. Now I see her come out. She's taking a late lunch. So, it's 2.18 now. I mean, 1.18. But, anyway... So, yeah, it's always something I learned. Not that I didn't feel that before, but it's just seeing people that's not seeing you. <clears throat> still getting around, still enjoying their life, still doing things, you know, while they have life to live. You know, can you do everything in life? No, but can you attempt to do some of the things you enjoy while you're living? Yes. Embrace life, enjoy life, experience life was the lesson I received on this. And don't wait. Be responsible for yourself. Don't wait on somebody else's demise to, for you to do and live like you want to live. Work for it. Do what you have to do. Got side hustle and everything else. But anyway, y'all, thank y'all for joining me for lunch, y'all. I'm going to drop the winners in of the drawing at the end of this uh, video. 
And I appreciate you all. I love you. God bless you. God loves you the most. Remember to always be kind to yourself and others. Be joyful and be blessed. And y'all have a good day. Love you much. Bye. Okay, let's pull the winner for the first prize, $50 gift card and items. Let's get the comments here. 36 unique. Let's start. I enjoyed everything. It was beautiful. And that husband and wife game was hilarious. It was really um, laughing at the game. And the game, he asked, how much money would you have? I would I would be broke. <laughs> Yolanda Kennedy. Congratulations. Okay, let's pull for the gift bag and cake. And let's see here. Paste the URL. It's 50 unique comments. Let's go down to start. Winner is Miranda Brock. And she says she's like doing something different and meeting new people. Doing something different and meeting new people. Uh, you both need to comment on your original comment and uh, with your email address so I can get in touch with you for your address to mail you out your prize. Thank you. Congratulations.